to the Mac Daddy here, and I'm going to do a video on what to look for if you're going to buy yourself a transferable M11-9 submachine gun. <clears throat> now, the M11-9 uh, machine gun is is one of the most one of the most popular transferable machine guns right now because it's versatile, and it's uh, for for a transferable machine gun. It's still on the uh, least expensive side, although it's not the cheapest one anymore. The reason why it's popular is because there is about 17,000 of them on the registry, which is quite a lot for machine guns, transferable machine guns. And uh, you can buy uh, different uppers for this thing that you can convert to caliber to uh, a rifle caliber, the 223 or 556 NATO. So you can turn this particular little hose, hose subgun sub into a uh, battle rifle if you wanted to. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I would look for if I was going to buy one of these. The first thing I would do is, is look at the uh, stock. You can still get replacements for these uh, stocks on the M11-9s. The, uh, the M10s and the M11-380s, they're not as easy to find anymore. So to open this stock, you just have to just push it down and it'll lock closed. If you wanted to close the stock again, you gotta, you got to give your butt a little squeeze or a little pinch. I prefer squeeze. You get a little squeeze and that will open or close the stock. <clears throat> the original M10s and M11-380s, they also lock on closing, so you have to squeeze them to get them to open. Now to open this particular, to remove this stock, you just have to pull it all the way out, push the button, the stock release button, right underneath here. Stock comes off. You're looking for square uh, notches on this to make sure these aren't worn out so that your stock won't collapse on you <coughs> when you're shooting it. This is how the latch mechanism works on the stock itself. You'll see inside here. Right in here, you want to make sure this isn't worn so it locks good. So <clears throat> I would check to make sure that the stock latch is good. It's not going to collapse on you. That's good. You want to make sure your stock latch mechanism is, is the spring on it is nice and, nice and tight. You want to look over this gun really good, and you're looking at the finish. You're looking for uh, the worn, uh, wear, wear, worn marks in the parkerizing. <clears throat> these guns were originally parkerized. I've seen the parkerizing uh, on these guns uh, change color to like a brownish, reddish color, or brownish orange maybe. Uh, this one is, is still in really good condition, even though this gun is I've owned since 1990. I've put over 40,000 rounds through this thing, and I just take care of it. I, I wipe it down. The place you want to look for most on the uh, finish here is on the, uh, the, the grip here because this is where people grab it the most and you're looking for a lot of wear over here and around here. And like I said, you're looking for uh, wear, you're looking for rust, you're looking for pits. If you find rust and pits on the receiver, then uh, when you uh, give a, a bid for this gun, it's got to reflect having the gun refinished by someone. Okay. The first thing I would do is I would do a quick function test on it. You lock it open. See, this is in full auto right now, so that's submachine gun mode. That's the way it should work in full auto. I'm going to put it in semi-auto. You hear that clicking noise? That's good. Because it's in semi-auto, that's the sound of the uh, disconnector popping off of the sear. Push and hold the uh, trigger. Should lock open. Should reset. Okay, that looks good. Fun basic function test works. Uh, like I said, you've checked the finish on the gun. Now you got to take you do a little field stripping. This is an aftermarket receiver pin. You don't need special tools to get this out. Or you don't need any tools. <clears throat> First on the receiver, this is your basic uh, receiver that came with the gun. It has a set of fixed sights on the front, parkerized. This is an aftermarket tungsten bolt. This is what your <clears throat> this is what your original bolt looked like. You can always tell an original uh, uh, M11 9 bolt because yeah. Every time, that's the way it was. That's the way they built it. Uh, of course, the first thing you want to look at on, on your bolt assembly is your uh, 
your buffer. You want to make sure that this buffer doesn't crack when you flex it like this. That's good. You, no extra wear, not, no excessive wear. You can pull out your uh, your extractor. Uh, no, your uh, yeah, your your extractor ejector ejector rod, and you can make sure that it's it's nice and straight. You don't want if the extractor uh, the ejector rod is bent, you have problems. Okay, you have problems with the uh, ejection. So that's good. Also check uh, to make sure <clears throat> that your firing pin isn't overly worn. You can get a replacement firing pin for 20 bucks. You can get a replacement one of these for $10. Always make sure you get replacements of uh, the fixed firing pin. Make sure it's the fixed machine gun firing pin. And you, have, you can get uh, replacements for these too. Pretty cheap. <clears throat> uh, there's nothing really to see here. You can go and look at the the rifling in the barrel and stuff like that to make sure it's still good. This is uh, one of the popular uh, accessories that were available. This is a K grip. This is where the money is. This is uh, the part you want to scrutinize the most because uh, this is where the money is. Uh, this is uh, the serialized part of the gun. This is what the federal government considers the gun. And uh, this is the most valuable irreplaceable part of this gun because the serial number of this gun is in the National Firearms Act registry before May 19th of 1986, which makes it a transferable machine gun. Remember that, transferable machine gun, because only civilians can only own transferable machine guns now in states that allow it, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna look at at this receiver is I wanna make sure it's square. You look at the edges of <coughs> the sides, no bulges, no damage, if you had, this gun could have been in a catastrophic uh, a problem like an obstructed barrel or a uh, double charge in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in, in the, on a cartridge from, from a stupid reloader, a uh, careless reloader I should say, and it could have caused damage to the gun. You make sure there's no damage there. You're making sure everything's square. The most important, one of some of the most important parts on this gun is the welds in these places. You'll notice on the uh, receiver pins holes that there are plates that are welded on inside. These are uh, strengthening plates that they put on on both sides and both sides of these holes. You see this? You want to make sure that these plates are welded on properly, that the welds are not cracked or damaged over here. You want to look at these holes and you want to make sure that they're not egged out or elongated from wear. That's important. Now if you look at the uh, in the back here, this is the cutout for your uh, stock. And you can see at the bottom here where the stock hits, there's good, you can see there's some good honest wear underneath here. This shows the gun's been shot. You shouldn't see, if, if you have a new in box gun, you shouldn't see hardly any wear at our here at all. <clears throat> so look, I showed you the, uh, these uh, holes over here. You also want to check <clears throat> the holes for the, <coughs> the, the, the uh, selector pin. You want to make sure that there's no big movement, no egging or, or elongation in that pin. You want to look at the, uh, your trigger pin over here. You want to make sure that pin hole over there is not elongated. It's over here and over here. You're checking that. That looks good. Another important place to check is on your feed ramp. You got a weld here and you got a weld here on both ends. You want to make sure that these welds are not cracked. That is a common thing. These welds get cracked. That's common. You want to check there to make sure that those are good. The most important place is to check your back plate and you're looking for the welds here and here. What happens is, is uh, if someone has been uh, shooting too hot loads in this or if they, uh, they've been shooting it without a buffer, the, uh, the weld would start cracking on the top on here and here and it'll start moving down and the back plate will just start peeling open on you as you shoot the gun. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for cracks on these welds over here. If you look inside here, you have an extra plate inside here that have two little holes cut, I mean, two little relief holes cut. And that's for clearance of your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your mainspring rod and your uh, ejector rod. You want to make sure that those will clear. You're also looking to make sure there's no dents in the back of this plate here from those rods, okay? That's important too. 
Now, as far as the, uh, the internal workings on these, you already did a, a quick function test, so they're probably in good shape. Things that fail is the, uh, the spring over here for your uh, trigger. Your trigger spring, these wear out, they can crack and cause problems. Get extra trigger springs. The main problem with these right here is to look for the edge of this uh, sear right here. This is the sear that holds your, uh, your bolt open when you fire the gun. And when you pull the trigger, that sear drops and it releases the bolt that goes forward and fires your gun. And it'll catch that bolt when you release the trigger. You're looking for extra wear on here. When, if the sear, the sear edge gets worn too much, it'll, it'll round out, it'll peen, it'll make, uh, get marred. If it, gets, if it gets worn out too much, you'll get a runaway and you can, you, someone can get killed or injured. Uh, this particular sear is marked Lage on it, which means it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a hardened sear that's, that's been properly heat treated. The uh, sears for the original guns, uh, they weren't heat treated as well because they were in a hurry to build these before the, uh, the machine gun ban took effect. So you're looking for that. Uh, let's say you've, you've looked at all your welds, you've looked at all the, the outside of your gun, the finish. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the magazines that came with the gun, you want to make sure that they'll fit easily in the receivers. These M11-9s, they're notorious for having uh, what they call tight um, magazine housings that make the, the magazines fit in tight. Some of the reasons why these magazines fit tight is uh, right here where you have the screw that's holding your uh, grip on here, there's a, uh, a, uh, a nut. I mean, the uh, nut is, is welded onto the, uh, the magazine housing. <clears throat> and sometimes the weld goes through the magazine housing and it gets into the inside of the magazine housing and leaves a little uh, glop there. And that can make receipt, uh, that can make a uh, um, uh, magazines fit tight. Uh, the other thing is, is sometimes when they weld it on your uh, your uh, trigger trigger uh, what do they call this trigger guard, sometimes the welds would feed would would weld through uh, into the inside of the magazine housing as well. That happened on this gun, and I had to uh, to use a uh, gunsmithing file to get rid of the extra welds that were in there, and that made the the uh, magazines fit in much better. The other problem that I had is is that right here uh, I had a uh, I had a little lip over here. The uh, the frame the receiver actually went further out, and there was a lip that the uh, the steel magazines were hitting up against. And I had to take a file and file that down too. So those are some of the things you want to look for. Uh, like I said, the most important thing is to is to really scrutinize this receiver because that's where you're paying the money for. And I hope I've given you an idea of what to look for in these guns. Uh, I hope that. Uh, this gives you enough information to want to, to buy one of these with confidence because I guarantee you if you get a good one of these guns you, you'll be really happy with it I've had this gun since 1990 and I love it it's, it's just been the best one of the best uh, uh, things I've ever done uh, even if you buy one of these guns now for ten thousand dollars I don't think that they're gonna make uh, they're gonna get rid of the machine gun ban anytime soon so they will continue to hold their value, at least hold their value. In my opinion, they'll get even more expensive. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to thank my wife for videotaping this again. Thank you very much.